laughed at my plans from time to time. Indeed, leaving Augsburg is not easy. It's a great school. You are set for a good year. Dr. Frame is in place as your new president. A great spirit prevails, and you are on your way. I was planning to stay around for a while, but as destiny would have it, I am moving on. I do pray that God, the God of hope, will bless you and the whole Augsburg community with peace and joy. And as I leave, I, I carry within my spirit three symbols on the Augsburg campus, symbols that remind us as a community of who we are and who we are called to be. I hope that these symbols become a part of your spirit as well. The first is Norm Holmes' sculpture of the burning bush, which sets on the quad in front of the Christensen Center. And in the Exodus story, we have the story of the burning bush account in, in chapter 3. Moses was keeping the flock of Jethro, and he led the flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And there the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Now, I would imagine if Moses had went home at that particular time, and his wife, Zephora, had asked him, well, did anything interesting happen today? See? Well, you know, I, I saw a bush out in the wilderness, and uh, it looked like it was, not, it was on fire, but it was not being consumed. And uh, so, yeah, that, that's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. But the text says, beginning at verse 3, then Moses said, I must turn aside and see why it is that this bush is not being burned up. The burning bush calls us to look again and again and again. Perhaps bushes still burn, but we just don't notice. Perhaps the bush stands before us in other forms. Certainly while you're here at Augsburg, look again and see why it is that the scriptures continue to enlighten the lives of people. Look again and seek to perceive why the churches in our community and in the world continue to enlighten, to brighten, and to uplift the lives of people. Bushes, I believe, still burn. The burning bush also asks the question, who calls? Is it Blondie's down on the Riverside Avenue who calls? Is it your peers who call? Is it your need for acceptance, desire for power, glitter of affluence that calls? The bush reminds us that it is God who calls. God called Moses to lead the Israelites out of bondage to freedom to the promised land. Mother Teresa claimed indeed that 
God called her to minister to the poor and the dying. What is God's call for you? Sometimes God calls through a bush, sometimes through a storm, an event, sometimes through a still, small voice, and sometimes through that inner feeling tugging on the heart. For some time now, God has been calling me to serve in the church as a parish pastor. It is my prayer and hope that I can now fulfill that calling. I move forward in faith. The second symbol that I carry with me is the symbol of the cross on Science Hall. I've been on campus a couple of weeks, and then one day a student asked me if I noticed the cross on Science Hall. I was not aware of it. I think his name was Mitch. And the cross, once you see it, once you see it, you notice it all the time. And as I perceive it, the science hall, labeled the science hall, and the symbol stands for reason and faith. Reason and faith. Reason seeks to validate through facts, through research, through critical thought. Reasoning is good. God does not want us to be ignorant about life, about the world, about the universe. But it is not the whole of truth. Faith is the conviction of things not seen, Hebrews declares. For example, when we look through a microscope or a telescope, Everybody sees the same thing. At least we are supposed to see the same thing. Uh, but a person of faith might also see the creative, the redemptive, the sustaining activities of God at work. We cannot prove faith, but we have the testimony of generations of people of faith, the Apostle Paul declares, I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Faith stands stands firm amidst all the changes and the challenges of life. We are called to be people of reason and faith. The third symbol that I carry forth in my spirit is this beautiful chapel. This center clearly symbolizes a sense for community and a sense for the transcendent God. And what captures my imagination the most is, the, is that the place, the highest point in the chapel. In some churches, you have this high altar and the pastor can preach forth 40. Here, the highest point, the cross on top, is over the people. It is the people who are most important. You. First Peter declares that you are a chosen people. Priests. God's own people. Chosen to proclaim the mighty acts of God. 
you have an important life to give and to share with the world. So then, discerning our call, we have the burning bush. In claiming our faith, we have the cross in Science Hall. And we also realize here that we have an important gift of leadership and service to give to the world. It's an important part of our journey here at Augsburg. The challenge of our call is to become real, to know our gifts, our strengths, our weaknesses, and to be equipped to share our gifts with the world. I draw on the wisdom of skin horse and velveteen rabbit to define for us the meaning to become real. This wisdom is also true for, for us during our Augsburg journey. Skin horse had been in the nursery for a long, long time, and velveteen rabbit was, was new to the nursery. And one day the rabbit asked the old skin horse, what is real? Does it mean having things that buzz inside you with a stick-out handle? Real isn't how you are made. It's not how you're made. The color of your skin physically able, disabled. It's a thing that happens to you. When a child loves you for a long, long time, not just to play with, but really loves you, then you become real. Does it hurt? That's the love. Sometimes, said the skin horse, for he was always truthful. When you are real, you don't mind being does it happen all at once, like being wound up, or bit by bit? It doesn't happen all at once, said the skin horse. You become. It takes a long time. That's why it doesn't happen often to people who break easily, or have sharp edges, or have to be carefully kept. Generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been loved off. I'm just quoting the text. This is what the text says. That's what it says here. Your eyes drop out, and you get loose in the joint and very shabby. But these things don't matter at all, because once you are real, you can't be ugly, except to people who don't understand. Once you are real, you can't become unreal again. Augsburg has helped me to become real. I have come to perceive that perhaps I'm not cut out to be the director for church relations here at Augsburg. I don't have that resolute character for raising funds or that use, youthful bounce to recruit students. Yes, knowing this hurts. But I've also come to know more clearly that when I meet a physically challenged person, or when I lead a Bible study, or when I'm in dialogue with a person who's struggling with, with doubt, or when I sit down with a couple who, who's seeking to preserve their marriage. Or when somebody talks to me about a career in the church. Or when I preach. Or when I read, read to Adam, my grandson. Then I become real. My heart and spirit ignites. And I journey forth the deed to grow in realness. I indeed thank uh, Laura Lee 
and Dave Wald and Lil Manu, especially those three, others indeed, for um, working with me at Augsburg through these last 10 years. I thank my family, some of whom are here today, my wife Laverne, Seth, Eric, Rachel, for standing by. My prayer for you, for you, is that you become real in your journey here at Oxford. Let us pray. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's sing, Precious Lord. Two years ago, when our distinguished visit, visiting uh, professor of philosophy from Yale, Paul Homer, was here, he said one day, you know that Kurt Peter is a sweet guy. And I think that would be echoed by all of the students that Kurt has been in contact with and taught, by all of the colleagues and faculty and staff. Kurt is truly a sweet guy. We will miss that sweetness in our midst. Uh, Kurt, uh, some of you know and some of you don't know, went through a very delicate 13-hour surgery two weeks, I believe it was, after he arrived on campus 10 years ago. It was a cancerous tumor, a brain tumor, a sinus tumor, I believe. And he has taught us so much about suffering and, and uh, grit over those years, and we, uh, we thank you for that, Kurt. There will be a reception following this in the atrium. Please stay, stop by and have something to eat and greet Kurt. We remind you that tonight our communion service is at 9.30. All of you are invited. Please come. And tomorrow at chapel at 11.20, we have a chance to sing some of our favorite hymns. So come with the 
reservoir of, uh, of tunes, or just the titles. Gabe will figure it out. Tomorrow also at 2 o'clock, uh, Don Warren's mother will be laid to rest. Even though it's a private ceremony, I know some of you have expressed an interest in attending. And you can talk to me and we're trying to work out some ways where we can express our expressions to Don and his family. Don is in charge of the Learning Center here. I'm going to use the benediction today from 1 Timothy 6. And we, we uh, can apply it to our lives, as, but especially, Kurt, this is for you. But as for you, child of God, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Guard what has been entrusted to you. Grace be with you. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.
just made that up on the spot. Actually, you're in for a great treat today because you get to hear Gabe at his best. Uh, we've asked you to fill out uh, those little sheets that we gave you at the door. Give us your favorite hymns. Now, do us a favor. Don't just put the number down. Uh, put at least the first couple of words of the title so that uh, that's the way Gabe goes best. He plays by ear. We call this uh, Favorites Day, Gabe's Chapel, another word uh, for it. And, uh, and also put Blue Book or Green Book. And uh, if you have some others from another book, write them down. We'll sing them some other time during chapel, but probably not today. We'll find a way to sing those as well. Basically what happens is if we don't get to all of these hymns today, we keep a record of them and uh, we try to sing them all throughout the semester. So we begin by singing uh, Alleluia. We sing your praises from With One Voice, the Blue Book, uh, a great South African number. And following that, we will have an invocation. And then we'll send Larry into the crowd to pick up your, your little uh, slips. Please stand. Touch us, O God, through your gift of music, through the sounds and senses of song, through the wonder which fills our souls with heaven, that we might be absorbed in the magic of music, and that in this moment of oneness, our lives will be bonded to each other and to you. Amen. You can be seated, and we will sing hymn 718 in the Blue Book. 718. Fourth stanza, stanza four.
Same book, 752, I, the Lord of sea and sky. Here I am, Lord. Gabe doesn't know numbers. He knows names the titles. So there's two titles in this one. Take your pick. Now we move to the green book, the LBW, 346, When Peace Like a River. This song was written by a name, H.G. Spafford, who lost his three daughters in a uh, terrible shipwreck. And his wife was in serious condition, and he took the next boat over to England and asked the captain of the ship to show him where this shipwreck had taken place where his three daughters had vanished. And at that moment, these words came to him. He wrote, When Peace Like a River, it's a very powerful song, 346. The last stanza, stanza four. And Lord, haste the day when Then shall some Sixty-nine. The church is one foundation. I love to tell the story. 390, I love to tell the story.
righteousness. It's about faith and love. It's about setting your eyes on the things of above. It's about holiness. It's about holy word. It's about living each day by the truth that you've heard. Amidst all these changes we see in this world. It's about Jesus. Okay, now. If you've seen me before, you know that you don't just get to sit and listen. So what I'd like you to do is if you just, when I point to you, I just want you to hear this, say that phrase, it's about Jesus. Here we go. One, two, three. Yeah, okay. You know, one thing we need to have here in Augie land is a little enthusiasm. So when I hear you say it, Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. That's a very exciting thing, because life is truly about him. Here we go. One, two, three. Yeah, there you go. Let's get our hands together this morning. It's not about shopping malls and fancy toys. It's not about glamour girls, GQ boys. It's not about Friday nights looking your best. No, there's no life that's found in any of this. So many choices to make, so many roads to go. You can search to the ends of the earth, but there's one thing you should know. This is life, yeah. Cause it's about righteousness and it's about faith and love It's about setting your eyes on the things of above And it's about holiness and it's about holy word It's about living each day by the truth that you've heard Amidst all these changes we see in this world Here we go, one, two, three Good job It's not about sex and drugs and getting high. It's not about life's a drag, then you die. It's not about violence and making a mess. No, there's no life that's found in any of this. What's the meaning of life? What is the mystery? Yeah, yeah. It's found in the man who is God, and he came to set us free. This is life, yeah, cause it's about righteousness and it's about faith and love. It's about setting your eyes on the things of above and it's about holiness. It's about holy word. It's about living each day by the truth that you've heard amidst all these changes we see in this world. So what's the meaning of life? What is the mystery? Yeah, yeah. It's found in the man who is God, and he came to set us free. Now this is life. He is life. He's the way, the truth, and life. Yeah. It's about righteousness. It's about faith and love. It's about setting your eyes on the things of above. And it's about holiness. And it's about holy word. It's about living each day by the truth that you've heard. Amidst all these changes we see in this world. Come on now. One, two, three. Yeah. Yeah, lies about Jesus. It's only in Jesus. Well, what a good day it is today, yeah? Yeah, how many Norwegians do we have here this morning? <laughs> how many Norwegians had coffee this morning? How many non-Norwegians? We'll get you before we're done. <laughs> um, it is very good to be with you. Uh, how's the Augie football team doing? Want to know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Undefeated. <laughs> that works for me. 
you know what? I need a couple volunteers. Can I please? I need a couple volunteers. See, people know what's coming here, so. I need, you know, why don't you go ahead and point to the person who's really obnoxious next to you? Larry? Larry, come on, brother. I need, I need somebody else. Somebody else? How about in the nice fish shirt there? Yes, the Jesus fish shirt there? Yes, okay. Everyone say hi, Larry. Say we love you, Larry. Larry, say, hey, Jody. We love you too, Jody. Now, Larry, look at Jody and say, Jody. <laughs> thanks for not leaving me alone. <laughs> People, we're going to have a little group participation if we could this morning. This is by request this morning. Everybody stand up if you would, please. Feet together. Oh, repeat after me. Repeat after me. Feet together. Knees bent. Arms out. And this morning, if you would, please, Tushi out. Yes, I know. Some are like, uh, this is chapel, isn't it? <laughs> Here we go. Tushi out, and we go like this. Go. Say yay, 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 by grace. Go, Larry. <laughs> Here we go. Say yay, 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 by grace. And then this morning, let's go like this. Through uh, uh, ooh, uh, ooh, 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 our faith. Go. Through uh, uh, ooh, uh, ooh, 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 our faith. Keep going. Don't stop. Keep going. Now. Say yay, 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 by grace. Very nice. Keep it going. Work really hard. Go through ooh, uh, ooh, 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 our faith. Yeah? Great. Here we go. Now you're swimming. G-R-A-C-E. We will worship you faithfully. Come on, people. Stay above water. Here we go. We will, and you're going to twist. We will live eternally. What a life for you and me. Swim. G-R-A-C-E. We'll worship you faithfully. Twist. We will live eternally. What a life for you and me. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. All right. Here we go. Feet together. Knees bent. Arms out. Two shots. And one, two, ready, go. Say yeah, 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 by grace. Go. Do, uh, uh, ooh, uh, ooh, 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 okay. Very nice. Worship you faithfully. We will live eternally. What a life for you and me. Swim, G R A C E. We'll worship you faithfully. Twist. We will live eternally. What a life for you. Here we go. Go. Say yeah, 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 yeah. Bye. Go. Do. Uh, 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 uh. Very nice. Now here we go. Now go. Say yeah, yeah. the swim g-r-a-c-e we'll worship you faithfully twist we will live eternally what a life for you and backstroke g-r-a-c-e <laughs> we'll worship you faithfully twist we will live eternally what a life for you and me okay people get the hands together let me hear you go i'm saved I'm saved by grace. I'm saved. And I'm saved by grace. I'm saved. Well, I'm saved by grace. I'm saved. Well, I'm saved by grace. Everybody go now. Say yeah, 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 by grace. Go to our faith. Oh, you're working really nice. Big hand. You may have a seat. Sorry. Everyone go. Mm. There it is. Okay. Well, it's been fun this past summer for uh, um, the ministry. We've been uh, 
Uh, we just did a Christmas album this summer, which will be out in October. So imagine trying to record a record in July going, Have yourself a merry little Christmas. <laughs> it's 95 outside. So that was pretty interesting. Um, we've also been working on a, a record of a new original. For those of you who remember songs like Don't Look Back and those sorts of songs, we have a new album coming out. One of them is the It's About Jesus. And another one is going to be uh, um, a song. You know, it's kind of like without Christ, we are like a leaf that blows around in the wind. We have no direction. We don't know where we're going. And uh, Jesus is saying, come in. Come into my house. Don't be out in the wind. Come in and I will take you in and I will give you life like no other. For those who don't know Christ, and until we know who he is, we are like child in the wind. Run, run, run from the one, one, one who made you from the dust of the ground. Here, here, here. He is near, near, near. And when you're done, where will you be found? To everything there is a reason, and the time to set it right is today. To everything there is a season, and your soul is such a high price to pay. So come on, come out of the grave, child of the wind. To be saved, won't you come in? Today is the day to turn from your wicked sin. So come out of the grave, child of the wind. Why, why, why won't you cry, cry, cry? Cause this old world has taken its toll. Please, please, please get on your knees, knees, knees. And pray to God for grace on your soul. You can pile up your riches till you live on a mountain of gold. You can make a million wishes, but in the end, the truth will be told. So come on, come out of the grave, child of the wind. It's time to be saved, won't you come in? Yeah, yeah. Today is the day to turn from your wicked sin. So come out of the grave, child of the wind. Come out of this grave, child. To be saved, won't you come in? Today is the day to turn from your wicked sin. So come out of the grave, child of the wind. Thank you.
we uh, suffered a great loss in the church, and I think you all know about it. Uh, Mother Teresa. There's no doubt that she had God's hand on her life. When we talk about and think about what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11.1, 1, he said, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. I've met many people. I never got myself ever to meet Mother Teresa, but I've got to meet many people who did. And the one thing they say is, she's, she was the real article. She wasn't just a, a public, you know, someone that we just picked to say, we're going to make her a great person. God made her the person that she was and the servant that she was. Now, the thing that was amazing was a, an account I heard about a reporter who spent some time with Mother Teresa. And he wanted to do, like, you know, a report, kind of do an article on her, and so he asked Mother Teresa if I could spend the day with you. He asked her, and she said, oh, yeah, not a problem. Just, you know, just follow, follow me and spend the day with me. I have no problem with that at all. And he, she said, well, why don't you meet me at, at a hospice at about 6 in the morning, and then we'll, we'll get going. And so he did, and by noon that day, after following Mother Teresa and all the time that she spent, as she would always say, she'd say, just love them. Just love them. By noon that day, that reporter couldn't take it anymore. He was wiped out. He was so tired, he could not take it. And he asked Mother Teresa, Mother Teresa, he said, I need to take a break. And she said, well, go, go grab an afternoon nap, and I'll, I'll catch you in the later part of the afternoon. And so he went and took a, got some rest and caught up with her, and she was still going. In the, early, in the early evening, late afternoon. And at the end of the day, he said, Mother Teresa, I'm, I'm wiped. I'm about half your age, and I have not had any of the ailments that you have had. And he said, Mother Teresa, I don't understand how you can do this. How do you make it? You're twice my age. And I can't keep up with you. And he, she said, well, well, come here, I'll show you. And they walked up to her room and opened up the door to this very simple room, a simple bed, one picture on the wall, a writing desk. And that was it. And he's kind of like, he didn't understand what was going on. She said, come here. And they walked over to the bed. And on the floor, she said, right there, that's why. And on the floor, there were two worn-out spots on the wood, indented, engraved into the wood. And she said, every morning, I spend hours, if I need to, on my knees. And I spend time praying and talking with the Lord. And it had worn, her knees had worn a spot in the wood, an indentation in the wood. You know, when I think about the need to spread the gospel and the need to share Christ, there's one thing that's for sure. It really is a need. And the only way that we're ever going to do it, for those of us who believe and follow Christ, the only way it's going to happen is if we spend time with God. I love athletics, and I, I think there's a great analogy there that says when the players, players can't play the game unless they spend time with the coach. Unless they get the message from the coach. They ask the coach questions. I think the Augsburg football team, the undefeated football team, would say the same thing. They can't win without the coach. They need the coach. But ours is much more important than a football game. You see, I kind of look at sharing the gospel like this. Imagine if you had the cure for cancer, what would you do? What would you do if you had the cure for cancer? Run to the hospital? Go just across the street over here. Maybe go to Rochester, go to Mayo, go to the cancer ward. I mean, if you found, like, this pill that was the cure for cancer, you would go crazy. You would go all over. You would go all over knowing that you had the 
you have the cure for cancer and that awful disease that I think we all have known somewhere in our life that has died from that, you know that they wouldn't die anymore because you have the cure. Well, let me ask you a question if I could. Isn't Jesus Christ better than a cure for cancer? A cure for cancer would be great, but that'll maybe help you live to be 80, 90 years old. But when Jesus says, I am the way, truth, and life, isn't that greater? Because it's what drove Mother Teresa. It's what drives a man like Billy Graham. It's what drives Dick Cardell, Dave Wold. I know that. Because Jesus is greater than a cure for cancer because Jesus lasts forever beyond our flesh. As you look at your time with Christ and you look at your time and your fever and your passion for sharing his love on campus, do you have a fever like if you had the fever for a cure for cancer? In a world full of broken dreams where the truth is hard to find for every promise that is kept there are many left behind and though it seems that nobody cares it still matters what you do Cause there's a difference you can make But the choice is up to you Will you be the one to answer to the call? And will you stand when those around you fall? Will you be the one to take his light into a darkened world? Tell me, will you be the one? And I know sometimes that it's so hard to know who is right and what is wrong where are you supposed to stand when the battle lines are drawn because there's a voice that keeps calling out to the one who's not afraid to be a beacon in the night to a world that's lost its way. Will you be the one to answer to the call? And will you stand when those around you fall? Will you be the one to take his light into a darkened world. Tell me, will you be the one? There's still some battles we got to fight from day to day. But the Lord will provide the power for us to stand and say, Yes, I'll be the one to answer to the call. And I will stand when those around me fall. I will be the one to take his light into a darkened world. Will you be the one? Are you going to be the one? to take the time and pray today and ask God to give you the strength 
for you to be the one. May you take the time today to get on your knees and ask God to give you the strength. Because it is greater than the cure for cancer when Jesus says, I know a truth in life. Go with the Lord and keep your eyes on Jesus. Thank you for letting me be with you this morning. It was my privilege. Have a great year.